On a world that challenges, challenges the imagination, many things can happen. Light can slow down, time can be stored. Witches and wizards don't actually do much magic anymore, and even death might take some time off. Such is the case on Terry Pratchett's Discworld. Come with us now as the Atlanta Radio Theater Company presents, in cooperation with the Orangutan Foundation International, a story that dares to explore where the dragons went and what might happen if they were to spring fully formed from the depths of our imagination. Terry Pratchett's Guards, Guards. They may be called the Palace Guard. The City Guard. Or the Patrol. Whatever the name, their purpose in any work of heroic fantasy is identical. It is, around about chapter three, or ten minutes into the play, to rush into the room, attack the hero one at a time, and be slaughtered. No one ever asks them if they wanted to. This story is dedicated to those fine men. Watch. This is space. Against the wash of stars, a gleam is seen as the glint in a giant eye, and the darkness moves a flipper, and great Achuan star turtle swims onward through the void. On its back, four giant elephants. On their shoulders, rimmed with water, Glittering under its tiny orbiting sunlit lies the disc world, world and mirror of worlds. Zoom in. Witness the ram-top mountains, tall, jagged, and forbidding, dotted with caves and entrances to dwarven mine shafts. Follow one of those tunnels to the chamber where the king of the dwarves is having an awkward conversation with his son. We didn't like to say so before, Carrot. We thought you'd grow out of it, see? Grow out of what? Uh, growing. Uh, but now your mother thinks, that, that is, we both think, it's time you went out among your own kind. But you're my kind. Uh, n not, not exactly. Uh, Carrot, the, the truth is, you're human. What, like Mr. Von Eschy, one of the big people? You're a six foot six lad! He's only five foot! It's just not right to have you shuffling around on your knees all day, knocking yourselves out in stalactites and such. But maybe, maybe I'm just tall for my height. Uh, besides, you're a dwarf, ma'am's a dwarf, so I should be a dwarf too. Fact of life. Ah, uh, yes. Well, the, the thing is, we found you. you. You see, there were these carts, and dead people, extremely dead people, because of bandits. See, it, bandits. it was a hard winter that year. We had all kinds coming into the hills, so we took you in, and then, well, your mom got used to you, and well... <laughs> We never got around to ask Varnishi to make inquiries. So, I'm not a dwarf, then? Only by adoption. Oh. Sorry. I've asked Mr. Varnishi for some advice. He seems to think that a job with the Ankh Mork Pork City Watch will make a man of you. He says they take only the finest to uphold the law. But... And I wrote a letter to their head man. I believe they call him the partition instead of king for some reason. And you've been accepted. You're to present yourself immediately. Oh. We went through some of the storerooms and got some of the things that were in the cart with you when we found you, so you can take them with you. First, there was this sword. Ooh. And we took it to Mistress Garlic the Witch to see if it was magical. And? Ah, she said no. Quite the most unmagical sword she's ever said she had seen. Oh. And then there's this book. The Lores and Ordinances of the Cities of Ankh and Moorpork. This is all the Watchman has to know. You have to know all the laws to be good at this. Then I shall learn them straight away. Now, off you go. Be sure to write when you get there. I promise. Now let the eye wander away from the mountains and seek the city of Ankh-Morpork, greatest of cities on the disk, where we find Captain Vimes, commander of the Ankh-Morpork Night Watch. The city is, uh, uh, what's the name, thing, woman. That's what it is, woman. Strings you along, lets you fall in thingy uh, love with her, and kicks you in a, in a thingy, in a thingy in your mouth, tongue, tonsils, teeth. That's what she does. Oh, poor old Vimes went off and got drunk. No, not drunk. Another word ends with uh. Drunk, uh, that's it. Something else now. Uh, oh, time for duty. Uh, some new fella coming, some stick from the hicks. Oh, pfft. And now, from the noble Captain Vines, we turn our attention to another part of the city, where a figure in a dark hood scurries along the midnight streets, ducking from doorway to doorway, until it reaches one that looks particularly grim and forbidding. 
Yes. Oh, look. The significant owl out in the night, all right? Yet many grey lords go sadly to the masterless men. Yet verily, the rose is within the thorn. It's pissing down out here. You do know that, don't you? Yes. Um, the ill-built tower trembles mightily at a butterfly's passage. <sighs> The caged whale knows nothing of the mighty deeps, if it makes you any happier. Now let us see it, I'm soaked. Um, these deeps. Did you say mighty or <laughs> knightly? Look, it's me, Brother Fingers. Do you want the bloody book or not? I don't have to do this. I could be at home in my bed. Now, now, will you open this door? Well, all right. <laughs> Would you mind giving it a push? The door of knowledge through which the untutored may not pass sticks something wicked in the door. Oh, a push. I'll give it a push. Right. <laughs> oh! I call the unique and supreme lodge of the elucidated brethren to order. Right, right. Right, okay. Is the door of knowledge sealed fast against heretics and no less men, brother doorkeeper? Uh, here, I thought you were a sister. What are you trying to do? Get me kicked out? Shut up! Uh, um, uh, stock solid. Um, it's the damp. Uh, I'll bring my plane in next week. Soon have it all ship shape and tidy and it'll be just fine. Uh, all right, all right! Just a yes would have done. Art all here who art here. And be it well for a no less man that he should not be here. For he would be taken from this place and his gaskin slicked, his mules shown to the four winds, his welshet torn asunder with many hooks, and his figgin placed upon a spike. A figgin is described in the dictionary of eye-watering words as a small short cusp pastry containing raisins. The dictionary would have been invaluable to the Supreme Grand Master when he thought up the Brotherhood's Oaths, since it also included welchet, a type of waistcoat worn by clockmakers. Gaskin, a shy grey-brown bird of the Coot family, and Mules, a game of skill and dexterity involving tortoises. Brethren, tonight we have matters of profound importance to discuss. The good governance, nay, the very future of Ankh Morpork, lies in our hands. Do we not know that the city is enthralled to men who wax fat on their ill-gotten gains? Yet it was not always thus. There was once a golden age, an age of chivalry, an age, yes, brother Watchtower. Are you talking about when we had kings? Yes, very good, brother Watchtower. But that was all sorted out hundreds of years ago. Wasn't there some great battle or something? Uh, ever since then, we've had just the ruling lords, like the patrician. However, in times of trouble, someone worthy of the title of king may come forth and resume the rulership of the city. So say the ancient scrolls. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Happens all the time. Skyons, they're called. This prophecy and everything. My granddad told me, Yea, the king will come, bearing law and justice, and to know nothing but the truth, and protect and serve the people with his sword. You don't have to look at me like that. I didn't make it all up. Yeah, but we're not in much trouble these days. Of course, in the old days, it was easy. He just had to kill a dragon. <laughs> Too bad there are no big dragons anymore. Ah, but there could be. What? War. The real thing, a great big scales and wings. Breath like a blast furnace, them, them big cloy things on his feet. Talons? Oh yes, as many as you want. What do you mean, as many as I want? If you want dragons, you can have dragons. You can bring a dragon here. Now, into this city. And it would obey your every command. Um. Could you repeat that? You can control it. You can make it do whatever you want. And I'm not talking about a puny little pet swamp dragon either. The genuine article. Well, I thought they were just, you know, myths. They were myths. And they were also real. Both a wave and a particle. Okay, you lost me there. <laughs> then I shall demonstrate. 
You have the brook. You, <laughs> you have the book, brother fingers. What here? Ah, good. Thank you. Now, when I was undergoing my tuition by the secret masters in the mountains, among the many secrets they taught us was the current location of the noble dragons. They did not die out, but merely developed a new evolutionary niche, and they can be summoned from it. This book gives specific instructions. It's just in a book? <laughs> no ordinary book. This is the only copy. It is in the handwriting of Tubal de Malachite, a great student of dragon law. He summoned dragons of all sizes, and so can you. And if we get this dragon, the rightful king will turn up, just like that? Yes. Now, I asked you all to bring objects of a magical nature. Place them in the circle of conjuration. Now, if we're all quite ready... Um, but you haven't told us what to do. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? You've got to focus your concentration. Think hard about dragons. All of you. All of you. Now, here we go. Vivat Draco, nos invito tu cum quizquilae. Nos invito tu famulo. Nos varo. Vivat Draco, nos invito tu cum quizquilae. It was about to be the worst night of his life for Zebo Muti, thief third class. Your money and it wouldn't have made him feel any better to have known that it was also going to be his last. The rain was keeping people indoors, and he was way behind on his thieving quota. Write your money or Hello. Well, uh, that was really strange. Extremely unusual, certainly. I mean, did you see that? What was it? Uh, and who are you? Guess. Wow. I didn't think you turned up for the likes of me. I turn up for everyone. That thing looked like a bloody fire-breathing dragon. Did I suffer much? No, it was practically instantaneous. Well, there's that at least. What happens now? Guess. Contrary to popular belief, death isn't cruel. Merely terribly, terribly good at his job. We did it. It was here. I felt it. It was out there in the city, just for a few seconds. Look! Oh, oh. all the magical objects, they sucked dry. But that proves it works. Don't you see? It works! We can summon dragons. Hang on, though. Where's this dragon gone, then? We summoned it. It came. But only for as long as the magic lasted. Then it went back. And now there's the matter of the king. Have we found the right king already, then? That's a stroke of luck. Actually, we don't need the right king. No, I've just found us a likely lad who looks good in a crown and can take orders and knows how to flourish a sword. Yes, soon, brothers, we'll have a king. And he will need an advisor. A trusted man, of course. And then there will be no more summoning dragons. I can give it up any time. Any time I like. Now, go and find more magical items so that we may again summon the dragon. Well, my dear Tubal de Malachite, I've done it. Easier than expected, even with this bunch of simpletons. Just as well they didn't get to see how badly burnt the end of your book was. You were clearly not up to it. I shall do much better. ARTC.org